And the main reason this war has dragged on for more than a year is because the Hamas terrorist, Yahya Sinwar, refused a ceasefire and refused to turn over the hostages. Well, now Sinwar is among at least five top Hamas and Hezbollah leaders who have been killed since the war began. For more on the significance of all of this, we're joined by Face the Nation moderator and CBS News chief foreign affairs correspondent, Margaret Brennan. So, Margaret, how does this change things? Is it a game changer? It's potentially a significant opportunity, Nora, for Israel. Israelis, this is the equivalent of their Osama bin Laden. And so Prime Minister Netanyahu said today it's not the end of the war, but it may be the beginning of the end. For the better part of a year, Sinwar evaded not just the IDF, but U.S. Intelligence and Joint Special Operations Command, tracking him down in just an area of 25 miles that is the Gaza Strip. So those Israeli soldiers just stumbled upon him out in the open. Now President Biden is pressing Prime Minister Netanyahu to seize the moment to potentially withdraw troops from Gaza, let food into the starving people there, and he's sending Secretary of State Blinken to the region next week to help work on how to get those hostages released who are still being held by Hamas. It's not clear who will be the next commander. But to be clear here, Nora, Sinwar's dead, but the head of U.S. intelligence warns that the death and destruction from this war will have a generational impact on terrorism. And what does this mean for that planned Israeli attack against Iran? Well, U.S. officials still expect an attack by Israel on Iran, but it's not clear how all of this will affect the timing and the calculus. But in recent weeks, uh, as the Israeli prime minister said today, they have taken out some of the most notorious leaders of Hamas and Hezbollah, and that is dismantling Iran's terror network in the region. Margaret Brennan, thank you so much.